I like to make a good practice that I check all my O-rings, uh, especially if I already have the part out. Um, there's three particular O-rings that are, are key to making sure that there's that the fuel gets to the atomizing chamber and the compressed air gets to the atomizing chamber. So the top port right here is for fuel. The middle one is for compressed air. Okay, and then this is the return for all the fuel that doesn't get sprayed. Again, fuel. Compressed air, return. Um, inside of the seat here, there's some O-rings. And this is a great little tool to get those out. Yeah, how are you getting back in? <laughs> you just press them in. It's easy. There's a little seat. I always like to make it a good habit to check these. Make sure they're not cracked, tore up, messed up, or anything like that. If they are, you want to go ahead and replace them. Uh, there's some in your maintenance kit that you can replace them with. These two are pretty much the same size. Um, the drain back one is a lot bigger. So you can see they're in sizes. Okay. Uh, so you can't mix one without the other. <laughs> All right. Um, to put them back in, you basically just kind of squeeze it like that. Kind of line it up in there. And you just press it back in with the two. There it is. You want to make sure that it's sitting in its seat good. All right. And that it's not cocked or binding or anything like that. Um, so again, if those O-rings are missing, then you're going to leak fuel out of there or compress there. So that could be one of your problems. If you have a compressor gauge on the compressor head and it's showing under 15 PSI and you got a brand new compressor head and all your lines are nice and tight, but you're still not making enough PSI to make a spray and it's spitting, the burner spinning, then I would check those things. Right. Uh, so, one of the reasons why I took the front flange and all that out first is because I knew I was going to turn this upside down. And that kind of balances the burner for me. If I had the flame tube, air tube here, it would try to tip over on me. So now I can work with it pretty easy. Okay. Uh, what that also does is it gives me a top view of the next thing I'm going to be working with, which is the sump and fuel pump, all right, for the replacement. Uh, on the replacement for that, um, you basically... Can I interrupt you a sec? So let's suppose you've, you've, the first thing you did, you had it on the bench, you turned it on, you looked at the, the um, flow control module, and you saw it wasn't any fuel getting in there. Okay, that's okay. a good... At that point, before doing, you could potentially go right to this step next instead of actually doing all this. And, right? and, and as a matter of fact, we're going to do that because that is a very good point. Um, so, let's say, for instance, you know there's a fuel problem and there's no fuel flowing in the overflow in the flow control module. The first thing that I would say to check is this membrane diaphragm. Uh, to get to the membrane, um, you unplug this tube here. Are you going to ask me and then walk away? That's nice, yeah, Austin. I know <laughs> uh, I'm on 27%. Uh, <laughs> right, anyways, let me keep going. Um, so, you take out, you take out, to gain access to the uh, membrane, um, where's he going? Bathroom. Oh, well, wait. Hey, let me show you where there's a bathroom at. Go into there. And just ask one of the guys for a bathroom. There's one right there. I want to wait for him. Yeah. So let's pause all this. So what does this do, bad boy do? That guy. It's meant to, um, is designed to force the membrane 